Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, and anyone joining us, we have uh, welcome to the Economic Tourism Development Tourism Event Management Meeting on May 19th. We already did the closed portion of our agenda. We are now ready to move into our open portion, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Is there any declarations of conflict of interest? Just a point of order. Uh, Chair, do we not just <coughs> have to move a motion to go back into the open session? Mm -hmm. Do we do that now? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we already did. Could I have a motion to move back into open? Um, no. Seconder, yeah. everybody in favor? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. So I'll call the open part of our meeting to order. Uh, is there any declarations of conflict of interest? No. Can I have an approval of our agenda? Right here. Seconder. Everybody's all in favor. An approval of our minutes <coughs> from May 5th, 2021. Oops. Second. Deputy Cody, everybody in favor? Any business arising from those minutes? Okay, moving, any, uh, move right into discussion and reports, and we'll start with the economic, economic development report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so uh, the economic development report, committee report for May 19th. Um, just some uh, housekeeping items. I've uh, recently taken back the um, tax incentive files from the finance department. Um, so we're making sure they're up to date, um, drafting new agreements, making sure payments are sent out. Um, I've uh, proceeded with uh, the first payment to the downtown Charlottetown League for their June 1st installment of their budget. Um, I had an excellent meeting with them as well, uh, so I'm looking forward to working with them uh, closely in the uh, forward. Um, I, I did answer a request from uh, a prospective business, um, or a, sorry, a property owner about the tax incentive program. Um, unfortunately, his, uh, his property doesn't conform to the the the, uh, the, uh, the program the program thank you <laughs> um, so I passed him along to uh, planning and development uh, to see if he uh, qualifies under the heritage grant program um, so I'll double check with them just to see that he's gotten in contact um, I'm also working with uh, a company out of uh, Mumbai India who's looking for uh, some space to open a satellite uh, office here in, in uh, Prince Edward Island, so I'll be working closely with them to find some possible uh, um, areas in the downtown for them to uh, to relocate to. Um, uh, working with, uh, with Doug um, on an ad for future economy, um, they did, they're doing a biotech spotlight. I know that the mayor and a couple of other uh, uh, stakeholders have been interviewed already. Um, so in advance of that, uh, that uh, interview going live online, we're going to be putting uh, some ads for Charlottetown specifically on there. Um, working with Invest in Canada, they're, uh, they're doing a spotlight on PEI for the Trades Commission's service. Um, and what they're, they had originally planned it for July, uh, but due to some scheduling issues, they're going to bump it up. Uh, to June, so we're meeting with uh, Invest PEI, uh, the Bio Alliance, uh, ourselves, and the City of Summerside uh, to determine how the programming is going to look um, and, uh, and get some some preliminary uh, uh, ideas about who's going to say what, uh, etc. Uh, you know, each each individual organization will have about a five to ten minute presentation time. Uh, where you know we'll go over a value proposition and some some interesting things that are happening with bio um, in the area, um, and we're going to be doing three different presentations to cover different time zones uh, for those uh, for those trade commissions. So uh, I'll give you a little bit more information on that once we meet and uh, let you know how it's going to move forward. Um, uh, working on a list of uh, some strategic initiatives to populate a strategic plan economic development plan, a economic recovery plan, I'm not sure on the verbiage. I guess it would depend on kind of what's included in that uh, once it's determined. Um, but I'll be bringing that list to the committee at the next meeting and so I'll be asking for comments um, as well as establishing a priority list of these things. Um, and you know, again, some of the things that I bring forward may not work right away, um, you know, so we'll put those on the back burner. But, uh, we want to uh, try to focus on uh, the, the so-called low-hanging fruit, 
um, things that are quickly and easily done with the resources <laughs> that we have available now, and also to take advantage and to build out existing inventory, uh, whether it be land or, or capital or, or individual labor, um, before we try, you know, reinventing something or starting something new. Um, and then, uh, you know, just going to get an opportunity to kind of go about the, the city and introduce myself to the individual businesses and and uh, kind of get an idea of what they're looking from look for sorry looking for from the economic development department and how I can assist them in either you know reaching their goals individually or uh, you know assisting uh, businesses in general so that's thank you good report any, any questions though? questions for Stephen you good that's great Steve keep up thank you good job Move on to the tourism and culture report. No? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, things continue to move at fast pace in the tourism department. Uh, next week is Tourism Week nationally, so uh, TIAC will be recognizing on a national level the resilience of our industry through this unprecedented time. Um, they will actually be calling on Canadians to take the 2021 Tourism Pledge to travel in Canada. So when restrictions are lifted, they're asking people next week to take the pledge online that they will put their travel dollars into traveling within the country before they put their travel dollars into traveling internationally. Um, and they'll also be spending the week highlighting different regions of the country. So Atlantic Canada will be highlighted collectively on Monday next week. Um, the City Hall Tower will be lit in green this weekend in recognition of Tourism Week and the lead into Atlantic Canada being highlighted. Um, and I also with our communication staff to make them aware um, and to have them monitor social media and do some shout outs for our tourism industry and sharing relevant information coming out of the national organization. So you can keep an eye out for that as well. Um, I won't touch too much on cruise because Mike covered a lot of it, um, but just something interesting coming out of the CDC, the way that they are allowing those cruise ships to begin operating again uh, around mid-summer in the U.S. is that they require 98% of crew to be vaccinated and at least 95% of passengers. So that is the, the target that they're working towards, which may or may not come into play um, as things begin to open up again in Canadian waters. Uh, our hiring for the summer is complete for the VIC. So as I previously mentioned, um, we're hiring 50% of our staff back. So two people to make sure that we are staffed if we do see an expansion of visitation, but not so much staff that if we don't see as much of an expansion as we might like, that we uh, don't have an ample amount of work for them to complete. So we have Robbie Monroe who will be returning for his third season. And then um, we have Regan Bolger who, who will be joining us for her first season. So those staff will begin on June 28th, hopefully very close to the opening of an Atlantic bubble. Um, work also, as I mentioned, continues on our summer civic events. So our priority right now is obviously on Canada Day. Uh, but we have also begun exploring some uh, opportunities for Natal Day and also for Cinema Under the Stars, which will be later in the summer. Um, on the arts and culture front, as we all know, work continues on the Sir Johnny McDonald statue file. Uh, we've seen actually quite a lot of positive progress since Council passed the most recent resolution last week, but it is later on the agenda, so I'll provide a more substantial update at that time. Um, as I reported, Last month, the process has begun with the Arts Advisory Board on the development of the RFP for their consultant to do some work on a public art plan. Um, so Doug and I have been working on that file in collaboration with our finance department and we'll be going next week to the board with a draft of that RFP in the hopes that um, within the next month that will be issued publicly. They've also set a date for this year's Arts and Culture Awards. So the awards will take place on Monday, October 25th, which will coincide with International Artist Day. And lastly, um, I'm not sure how many of you would have picked up on it, but there was some really great news for our local film industry that was reported earlier in the month. So the province has announced the new PI Film Production Fund. Um, so this is going to replace um, a previous fund that existed and it's coming out of recommendations from a task force that was set up in 2019 for how um, 
the province could be supporting the growth of that industry. Um, so basically the, the intention of the fund is to grow our skilled labor pool, it's to develop local creative industry workers, um, to build capacity of our domestic PEI film and TV production industry, provide local producers with opportunities to be more competitive, whether they're trying to attract financing or co-produce anything, and then also increase the visibility of PEI, obviously on screens across the country and around the world. Um, Stephen, obviously there's undoubtedly going to be economic development spill over here. There's going to be a lot of creation of good paying jobs and Innovation PEI has actually committed to a dedicated industry growth specialist. So they'll be focusing on creating a plan for marketing PEI as a film production destination and then also increasing visibility within the industry and attracting productions to PEI. So currently that fund is going to run through um, the end of the 23-24 fiscal and then it will be reevaluated. but it basically operates by offering a rebate on eligible expenditures to things that are filmed in PEI and then there's a few percentage point increases that they can get by using a local producer and by um, also co-producing things with that are series. So really good news. Um, your Worship, I have an update. It actually came out of the April 21st minutes when you inquired about the storyboards that are outside. So we've, we've done a lot of investigating. Um, it appears that those storyboards have been in place since 1999. And when the Echistics project was done for the additional storyboarding, it was done in 2009. They were not combined because the storyboards were still in good shape and relatively new, though some of the information has been transferred. <coughs> My recommendation based on this, the state of them right now would be that we capture in photographs the images that are on there and then verify with heritage whether that information is still of historical mm. significance and relevant mm. and then through the process of the next year, through the budgeting process, we can determine if we want to redesign them to match the other storyboards. We did, through the process of trying to locate the concrete-based ones, notice that a lot of the 2009 boards are almost reaching the point that they need to be replaced as well. Some of them are in better shape than others. Um, I have talked to CADC, I have talked to Discover Charlottetown, there's not a clear indication on whose responsibility that is, but it is now on everyone's radar. Yeah. We've also noted that um, through the Sir John A process that some of those stories may need to be looked at with a bit of a different lens to see if they need to be rewritten yeah. or if some more diverse stories need to be included into the overall yeah. walk. So I think we remove the old ones this season uh, determine if we need to replace them during the next budget process or if that information is, is covered off elsewhere and not overly relevant anymore. And then we'll need to look at, at a larger project um, with all of the boards on, under a bit of a different lens. Yeah. But could I suggest that you leave them there until we decide what we want to do? They're not legible right no, now. They're so, they're so, they're they're, so like active. I took photos of them and I still can't read them. So what would we put on them? Just leave them blank or take down the concrete? I think we would get public works to just remove the concrete. They're not they're not even visually pleasing to look at. Right. So I think we're better off to try to capture as much as we can, work with heritage to determine do they do they need to be there? Does the information need to be provided? Right and then um, just remove the structures altogether. Right. They may not be, even be in the best locations, so no. that can be reviewed as well if we do want to replace the information. So we're gonna update the 2009 storyboards, correct? The no, not right now. No, but that's but part of the plan. Yeah, I would say within the next two years, all of them will need to be replaced. And then the, the storyboards from 1999, you know, just try to capture what we can use in 2009 design is that what you want to do yeah okay we'll determine if we need any of the information some of it has been captured in the other stories right. not all of it has right so we can determine do we still want to have that information available to the public is it relevant and if it is is it in the right location if yes let's change the design so they all match yeah I, I would just ask that you know it, we're looking at, at 2023 for the winter games here yeah. And I know it's winter time, but those storyboards that are out there for 2009 are very visible. 
and the design is very conducive to heritage, short mm -hmm. down, downtown heritage. I would like to see them I would be part of the presentation and the branding we want to do. I would think that the ones that fall within the heritage district yeah. should potentially be replaced as part of that project because they were done by Acoustics, which is now Fathom, which yeah. is doing a larger project. Maybe they look to replace that as part of the overall project. The bases are all fine. Yeah. It's just the actual storyboard on top. And then we can look at the periphery ones um, in addition to that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you very much, Laura. Wayne with the event management report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, things continue uh, to be active in our um, area, as Laurel has indicated. Uh, we have had a number of event announcements which the committee would have seen. Uh, most recently, the Steel Timber Sports Canadian Championship was announced. We'll be announcing soon uh, the securing of a national uh, archery championship as well as an Eastern Canadian archery championship. Uh, plus, we continue our ongoing uh, bid efforts. We're also uh, surprisingly working with um, two to three new events that will be established and launched this summer. Some might ask why would you be launching new events in the midst of the pandemic, but it's the ideal time for them to do that with the um, support of uh, other levels of uh, government and to build off those for future years. So stay tuned for further um, information around that. We're spending a lot of time right now meeting one-on-one uh, -on -one and in strategic sessions with the, the array of, uh, of our normal summer annual events. So like Old Home Week or it um, uh, could be uh, Pride, Shellfish Festival, et cetera, to try to determine how their events will roll out uh, this year. Almost all of the events are at work and will happen in some um, capacity. So we're, we are spending a lot of time uh, with that. Uh, we continue to meet, this will be ongoing, but we do continue to meet with um, Canada Games that uh, we've met a couple of times uh, this month with respect to the cultural festival, uh, a potential legacy project uh, for the waterfront which is ongoing, and of course test events which we can host a year out in advance of the Games. That would be uh, the sports that are being hosted in, <coughs> in those actual venues. So we've identified um, several uh, events that we could possibly host here, so we're to work on uh, those as well. Uh, myself and um, His Worship recently attended, as well as virtually, Stephen and Laurel attended virtually uh, the YYG Charlottetown Airport AGM, uh, which was a good event, good little um, crowd out for that. Uh, I recently participated in um, a restart strategic planning session with meetings and conventions, PEI, pulling together a document that would be up to the uh, federal, sorry, to the provincial government to try to get some traction with respect to relaunching the meetings and conventions um, industry, so they continue to work on uh, that. We're to work uh, on the Mayor's Cup, the Angles Mayor's Cup, in support of Autism Stars for Life. Uh, the event will happen uh, in September, but it takes several months of planning, so we've had a couple of meetings um, today with respect to that. Our team uh, has met on a couple of, occasion, couple of occasions now with uh, communications with respect to how we can better work together to help them understand our area so they can hit the ground running as everyone knows there's there's two relatively new staff in that particular portfolio so uh, a lot of there's a lot of communication that overlaps with our um, department uh, pleased to say that uh, i've been recently asked um, by holland college to sit on their travel and events advisory board so i'll be participating on uh, that uh, board here in the uh, near future and i have a few items on the agenda which uh, will come up later thank you any questions right now for wayne we good? I'm sure we'll get there. I think you're probably up next, even is it with the Greater Area Chamber of Commerce AGM? No, that's, that's Stephen. Stephen, that's I meant. Yeah, I, yeah, sorry. What did I just call him? I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, attend the, the Chamber's AGM and President's Luncheon um, with the Mayor and Councilor Jankoff. Um, and basically, the, the Chamber took care of their, their annual housekeeping, uh, you know, uh, installation of the new president. Uh, new executive, um, uh, their financial uh, uh, review uh, to their membership, um, and then chatted a bit about um, kind of what the chamber is looking at doing uh, this year and beyond. Um, and then they also uh, uh, put out uh, they they did a rebranding exercise, 
Uh, so their website, their, their logo, and, and a lot of the, uh, the imagery on the website has been revamped. Um, so if you get an opportunity to uh, visit the Chamber website, um, I guess you know, if you have a frame of reference for what it was like before, um, uh, to see it now, it's, it's a little sleeker um, and uh, a lot more focus on individual businesses that are in the downtown and telling a story about you know, those businesses. And from, from what I understand, they'll be, they'll be reviewing it and, and bringing newer and different businesses on um, down the line. So it's just an opportunity for people to get to know the individual businesses a little better uh, when, they, uh, when they go to the chamber. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Stephen, yeah. at that meeting, um, they talked about the branding. Did they also talk about their strategic plan? Was that something they're working on? I believe they're working on a strategic plan, um, but but the, they didn't announce uh, that, it, that it's coming out yet. So their strategic plan plan is working on membership, and the membership's about a thousand members. They're at 20, just I think just shy of a thousand members, but they are putting a push on to get some some more members. Twenty-five percent I think are small businesses, and then a lot of professionals. Yeah. And you, I just want to go back to your strategic plan that you're looking at for the city, right? Downtowns are going to have to reinvent themselves post COVID nineteen. Sure. Right. Uh, how many businesses will be moving back down? Uh, will, will sustain uh, their business? until the end of this COVID, no one knows. So, you know, per that strategic plan, are you looking at maybe residents moving back in the downtown in those commercial spaces? Is that something that other municipalities are looking at? Definitely, uh, the, the, the balance or the number of, of uh, residential as opposed to commercial uh, is probably going to change. Yeah. Um, as a lot of the, the larger, especially some of the larger property holders are are noticing that you know they they've had um, uh, their their offices have been vacant even pre-COVID. Right. Um, so and and like you said, with the changes to how a lot of people are going to work moving forward, whether it be from home or even sharing offices. Right. Right? Yeah. So the the number of offices required will probably reduce, uh, which opens it up obviously to to retrofitting some of these areas into residential and again if you have more people living in the downtown core those are more more people that will frequent the businesses that are there and even possibly you know provide for for more businesses to move to the downtown if those services are required with the the increase of, uh, of residential and, and you so probably know that the city is engaged with a, a, a technology a company to uh, bring our fiber optics up to a higher capacity to, to increase the, uh, the, the, the bandwidth and the broadband, mm -hmm. or the broadband, increase the bandwidth. Yeah, yes. And that, that infrastructure is, uh, fiber optic infrastructure is very important for any development. It's like back when they developed the super internet highway. Well, you know, you know maybe we should be all trying to work together and what Mr. McEwen's doing in water and sewer and try to bring this fiber optic network in the downtown core so that anyone that moves down here or new businesses that move down here, they can tap into it. Yes, and, and that's one of the things that businesses or residents are looking for right. prior to making a decision to move somewhere, right. is what, what is the capacity or what are the services that are available. Right. And obviously the more up-to-date the services are in the city, the, the better that would be to, to bring people or businesses here yeah. specifically. Okay. But it definitely will be part. And so, to, uh, and to compare to um, Stephen, he has been meeting with uh, business owners into the downtown worship. He's trying to develop that um, strategy. It's not yet complete, but these pieces have been already part of that conversation. And with, they come back. With, with Daniel Mullins, or does he know yet? Uh, or is that, that someone else? This is about the, oh. about the building's worship. Right. And that piece will also has already started a conversation in the downtown, which we will share with. Um, and Mr. Novak, once we have right. uh, a greater understanding of what his intents are, worship, as you know, I'm asking back to the utility and on the council, uh, but we haven't got to that point yet, worship. Yeah. It's so it, it's, 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 it's coming forward. If you look at Bell and East Link and Shaw and tell us the really promotion of promoting the 5G, but when you look at data capacity and data, data uh, bandwidth, it, it's, it's, it's much higher with fiber optic because it can carry more data and distribute more, download quicker. So 
this is going to be very important in redevelopment. Yeah, and, and again, we'll bring, up, we'll, bring up, we'll bring that back, which again, it's premature. We went back to the national plan, they'll go through utility and on council. Yeah. Let's keep it rolling and we may have to up, up tech the speed on it too. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dima. Public Earth River Works the Living Shoreline Project Laurel. Okay, um, so this is part of a larger project that is being led through environment and sustainability. Um, it's based around shoreline restoration because of coastal erosion. So River Works itself is a public art component um, of this awareness project. And Charlottetown is one of the um, coastal restoration sites that's been identified as part, in, as part of the larger partnership. Um, so the reason that it's here is because it's public art, obviously, but the reason that it's information sharing is because the um, artwork that was selected through the adjudication process is temporary in nature, so it doesn't fall under our public art policy. Um, so essentially what Riverworks will be doing is, is using natural artwork to um, kind of uh, demonstrate coastal erosion and the impacts of that and, and bring awareness to it. Uh, the site in Charlottetown is tentatively identified as being on provincially owned land um, within the Hillsborough River Park and Trail System. So it's in really close proximity to the hospital. Um, so there will be, um, or sorry, there has been an open call for artists which has been completed. The adjudication process is also completed and actually Doug Dumay was selected as the successful artist for that. Oh. Um, so what he's going to be doing is actually, a, it's a five day performance. Um, so he's going to be constructing a makeshift artist studio uh, down at the shoreline in that area. And he's going to be setting up a photographer's studio within that structure. And he's going to be documenting through photography and poetry changes that he notes in the shoreline over the course of those five days, right. whether it's minute by minute or over the course of the day. So it's a really interesting project. I encourage you that when it actually is in place to go down and visit with Doug. Um, so Absolutely. like I mentioned, because it is less than 30 days, it doesn't fall under the, the public art policy. Um, Arts Advisory Board is aware of the overall project. They haven't been made aware yet this, who the successful project is actually going to, but they will be notified um, next week at the regular meeting. They were um, initially on board with the overall project when it was presented. Um, they are working with our planning department just to determine if that structure will fall under national um, building codes. It's unlikely that it will because it's a six by six by six structure, but they're still checking those things out to see if any permits are required. Um, so really just information sharing. There's a couple of rough sketches of what that project is going to look like. Um, and that's, that's it. That's great. I'm excited. Someone will let us know when that's ready to go. Yeah, sure. I think in speaking with Doug, I think he's going to target um, later in the summer. So Excellent. I'll definitely let everyone know. When that's Wonderful. Happening. Any questions for Laurel on the River Shoreline project? Perfect. Thank you, Laurel. Um, Sir John A. McDonald statues you again, Laura. Um, so we've, we've actually seen quite a lot of progress on the file over the last 10 days. We just wanted to make sure we are keeping the committee abreast of um, that progress. So what's happened since last Monday when the new resolution was passed and the original resolution was rescinded, um, the mayor's office has issued an official correspondence to all the way to the co-chairs of the board at the Mi'kmaq Confederacy of PEI and to the Native Council of PEI, officially confirming that that resolution was passed and that <coughs> the recommendations that were made last fall have um, been officially adopted as part of that new resolution. Um, it's also requested that all of those parties come back to the table to collaborate on implementing and advancing those recommendations. We've also had uh, continued communication with the original artist of the statue, Mike Halterman. We've done that communication through CADC. Um, so as, as I had mentioned during last week's council meeting, um, he has agreed as is his artistic right as the original artist to complete the new work and he's provided a bit more uh, additional information that is going to be pertinent to us moving forward. So the estimated cost to complete the work, which would be the addition of the new statue, repair work to the existing statue because of the vandalism that's taking place, um, as well as any required shipping is estimated at 125,000 US dollars. 
obviously until we have a really good idea of what that new artwork is going to look like and until he evaluates the extent of the damage to the current statue that is just an estimate but um, he feels that that is in line what the cost doesn't include is any placking that we need to install which would be done regionally and CDC has estimated that would be about 3,000 Canadian on the high end um, it also wouldn't include the consultation fee for the Mi'kmaq artists that we have committed to um, having in a in a consultative role. Um, and then, if there's any temporary signage required or any further installation required as part of the project, it would not be included. Um, so what we have also learned is that in order to get the best possible outcome, so it looks like a single piece of art, so the damage can be repaired. We will at some point need to temporarily remove the statue and ship it to the artist in Colorado for the work to take place. And then when it's completed, <coughs> they'll ship it back and we'll reinstall it. Um, and our timeline that we had originally um, hoped to work within, which was a six month time frame, is not realistic. So the artwork itself is going to take about 12 months to complete. There are other components of those recommendations that we will be able to advance earlier than, than the final installation of the piece. But um, from the time that we kind of give him the artwork back to work on, it's about a 12 month process before it will be reinstalled. So in knowing what the cost is, we've also initiated funding discussions. Um, the chair and I had the opportunity to have a very initial meeting with the province to talk about the project, um, the conversations were positive, and there will be a follow-up meeting that I believe uh, Sean Casey will also be attending um, to discuss about potentially a federal investment in it as well. Um, and my understanding is that Jill is working on scheduling that in the immediate future. And then we've also been working with communications to ensure that any progress that's made, we can communicate that um, publicly so people know where we are on the file. So today, based on the timeline, based on knowing that uh, if our artist ends up getting other projects in the meantime, we will continue to get bumped and in the interest of wanting to uh, begin to advance this project down the road, I am requesting from the committee consideration that we give permission to the original artist to start the process and that we uh, determine where the funding is coming from while we go through that process with the artist. Um, it, it seems as though funding will be available. The question is at what level and, and what that breakdown between different levels of government looks like, but I don't um, expect at this point that it's going to be an issue to get investment from all, all three levels of government. Obviously, this is unbudgeted at this point, so it's a conversation that will need to be had at the finance level um, to determine what the cost to the city corporation could be, but I think that it's, it's been deemed that it's a time-sensitive, important matter, and in order to secure the artist and move the process we are going to need to potentially work in tandem on the funding while the project is underway. Just to add to that, yeah. Aaron Hansen from CADC said that to get rebronze, there was only one foundry left in Canada, and it was in Vancouver. It shut down. So the only bronze foundry that you can find right now is south of the border. So that's another reason that you cannot do it locally because of the technology that's required, and it's just not a profitable boundary business. It's <coughs> there are few in the business, so that's one piece of information you want to add. So, so the process, if if we support as a committee to kind of start the process without the actual commitment, is it goes to back to finance? Is that what you said? Um, does it have to go back to council for them? Or? So, okay. does it need to go to finance and then to council or just to council? Council first, and if they agree, then obviously um, they'll go through it on a cycle of one, two, one, grants, or that may or not be um, maybe coming, whatever the shortfall may be, but then come back for finance for discussion. And then on council again. And back to council again. Yeah. Well, that's where council it will initiate that they support this moving forward with these known factors as they are today. It's 
very important that we get a meeting with the province as soon as possible. And in that meeting with the MP from Charlottetown, Sean Casey, I know that Aaron uh, Hans wants to be there because CADC wants to be part of the process. And the history of this, I know Councillor Tweel was on council at the time. It was a DCI initiated project, and they managed to get funding from tourism in Charlottetown and a co of 75000 So it was their piece of work that we assumed ownership. And I don't think there's any official documentation that says we took over the ownership. It was just assumed that we owned it, and now we have the ownership of it. And I think, you know, we do have a little bit of hesitancy of the, you know, the cost, but it is, that was $75,000 for that piece of art in 2009. So at 120000 with all the work that has to be done, it's still artistically and economically. And I did, have a, I did have a conversation with Aaron Hansen um, about the cost because the most recent bronze work that would have been done would have been in 2014 with the two greys on Great George Street. Yes. So those were done by an artist in Victoria. Um, and at the time, he felt that they had gotten a very good price on that, given that there's two figures. That was 140,000. He doesn't anticipate that if that was to be recreated now, it would be recreated at $140,000. So he did feel that the cost that has been estimated by the artist is in line with what the cost should be based on what was initially paid for John A. Yeah. Plus the work that's been done since then. Yeah. Plus he also said, Mr. Hansen also said that there will be an application that will be applied to the. Uh, pieces of art that it any it makes the, the, the bronze impermeable so if anything is poured over it doesn't doesn't stick to it now any application always has a warranty who knows but it's part of the process does anyone want to move that we at uh, this time sensitive thing that we at least get it maybe is it any room on the agenda for the next special meeting uh, there's a special meeting on council on the 31st uh, which we'll is nice. up to the mayor we could add yeah. that meeting just what you're right if laurel's concerned with time sensitivity and i know we're going to want john a back in queens they're going to want john a back in queen street so. well we had a presentation by another organization the other night so there's opportunities there also mm -hmm. the uh the sky's the limit here and what we can do with this there's already two presentations on there and two years right now. Um, yeah. So, and they'll take more than half hour, 45 minutes each. Uh, and then there's other things on the agenda that want it on there for <coughs> discussion, I'm sure. I need someone to move it anyway. Need a motion forward. Move motion on mm -hmm. move. And it's to move, the motion will be to move it to this issue, uh, this file, this initiative forward to council for discussion, I'm sure. Basically, that we have permission to start the artwork while in discussion with uh, the financial commitment from the other levels of government yeah, right. is what the discussion will be. Yeah. So that's the resolution. We've yeah. already committed to the five recommendations. Now it's starting the next stage. So I just need someone to second the mayor's motion to have this discussion at council. You'll second it. Could I have a vote, everybody in favor, to move this to council for the special meeting? For nothing. Thank you. Thank you. So, to Laurel. Laurel, you might be able. Would you be able to come to to yeah. that meeting, if that would be okay? Just to kind of, yeah. and even to add perhaps what the mayor mentioned about the bronzing piece yeah. not happening. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll have a conversation add that. with. I would phone your hands and get you more information. Wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for that report, Laurel, and for the great work on moving moving straight ahead. All right, Wayne, Quebec Garden. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the committee will recall that His Worship brought up um, the Quebec Garden at last um, meeting um, with respect to ensuring that uh, the standards of the garden and um, its very presence is in line similar um, to what's happening in Quebec as much as we can do. So I've worked uh, closely um, with both um, Jessica Corcoran um, as well as Paul Lee 
uh, with respect to doing an evaluation of that site. And so there's a number of things that have come out of that. Uh, there is a couple of sketches that Jessica pulled together that are attached to your document. But essentially, um, it, it's being recommended that we would remove the old storyboard to the right of the garden, which we talked about earlier. Is the, that's a part of the inventory of storyboards. We'd add two benches on each side, which are already an, in the inventory in, um, in beautification. Um, we would edge both sides of the garden with iris, iris plantings, which you can see here, which is the, the uh, a tribute to the fleur de lis and the Quebec uh, flag. Uh, we would also add uh, two banners onto the pole located at the garden. You can see those in the sketch um, as well, which would highlight the garden further, bring more attention to the garden itself. And then, of course, annual maintenance uh, will soon commence and be carried out, which will clean the garden up from winter wares um, itself. We may also, in the garden, there is uh, um, some trees in the garden as well. There's a number of plantations, but there's, uh, I believe, five trees. And we're going to um, relocate two of them to give the other three bigger trees opportunity to grow in that small, confined space. And we're relocating those. And that's at a recommendation of um, Jessica um, herself. So essentially, um, we're ready to move forward with this. This work uh, will be carried out over the next month and a half or so. It should be all completed by July 1st if the committee is willing uh, to endorse the amendments to the garden. And uh, it will be a nice uh, tribute to the launching of our new garden in Quebec City. Good job. All right, someone that questions for that before we move? We do have an indigenous garden down in the field, then, actually. We do, yeah. 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 We're going to do anything to the indigenous garden. I know there was a whale there, a polar bear. Yeah. So well, that, that particular item, you are right, your worship, would fall under beautification. It's, it doesn't okay. fall under our committee. The okay. Quebec Garden is here because it's a part of our municipal partnerships. Okay. okay. I could use a new sign. I was down there. Where the indigenous garden? Yeah. yeah. It's very, vis like it's not faded, it's very visible, but it's in a terrible frame. Maybe get that added to the, yeah, the Public, public works, works and beautification, beautification Committee. Yeah. Um, so with the you need a you need endorsement from our committee well, to move just, ahead. Yes, beautification is ready to act on it as well as as um, Jessica contributing her services. Okay. But we all want endorsement of the committee to move forward with the work. The, the cost of it is minimal and it's within operational budgets. Any concerns? Moving this forward, we're good. Perfect. Carry on, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you. Now, adrenaline sport event research portal. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We, uh, we've been working closely with uh, Adrenaline Magazine, which is Canada's um, sport tourism business magazine, essentially. And they have launched a new product, um, a sport event research portal. It's essentially meant to supplement destinations, existing websites and or inventories. Uh, the strength of this is in that um, organizations can set up an account, they can save their transactions, organize the research, and search their history by creating all of their own files. It's live, uh, real-time information, so if they're looking for suppliers, uh, if they're looking for information on the destination may, that may not always be included on a website, etc., cetera, uh, they would go to this particular site. A number of destinations across the country um, are buying in uh, to this platform. And given that we are still very much uh, in the pandemic, um, we're faced with the challenge of remaining competitive and have to look for unique and creative uh, ways to do that as we move through the recovery period. Uh, so this will just add another um, tool to our uh, toolbox with respect to our sport tourism file. The portal fee, um, which if you looked at the charts, it's in the $2,500 range and can be reduced as we bring on other local partners, uh, is accounted for in the uh, event management operation budget. So I simply wanted just to bring this to the <coughs> attention for information sharing, and there's no further um, action required. Any questions? Any questions? No, great. Good job. Because I think you're on next, too, for Ride Solar Sustainability Tours and Transit. Yes. <laughs> Exciting project. <laughs> Did we get this? Was that last year? Uh, we might have had the yeah, it was. project presented, right. um, but tonight it's here for a bit of a different reason. But it's that the committee endorsed the CAO. Yes. In the letter of support. Okay. Correct. So um, this particular pro project is um, it has uh, lots of relevance to the tourism 
um, industry in terms of visitation for a product as well as locals. Um, it's a solar uh, bike, um, pedal bike. Um, which can accommodate up to 18 passengers. They have a max of 14, obviously, during um, COVID. It's uh, very um, green in terms of its operation, clean, fun, and safe. It operated in the downtown the last couple of years. I'm not so sure how much they operated last year, but they were uh, moving forward. They're looking to expand uh, their footprint, and they visit many pubs and restaurants in the city, and they also look at very, uh, various scenic points. So this year they want to add uh, the addition um, of uh, onboard uh, beverage service, which is similar in many other cities across the country and throughout Europe. It's gone uh, to the police department, has authorized uh, their endorsement of it, and the Liquor Commission as well, as long as both of those agencies are supportive of each other. And in order to um, ratify the agreement and move it forward to official licensing, uh, we require a letter from the CAO indicating that the city endorses this venture and we're all welcome to the first ride. <laughs> I might actually get fit this summer. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just teasing. That sounds fun though. Yeah. I've seen those where they do that. People yeah. do really enjoy them. So Ron Kennedy from the police department has been active on this file and working directly uh, with Richard Blackhair from the uh, PEI Liquor Commission. It's obviously uh, it's more of a, uh, a, a cultural activity on board. It's not like full bar service. You're not on the bike a great amount of time, right? You're moving around. Um, beverages are served in um, non-breakable uh, cups, and you get to burn off the calories by pedaling. That sounds good. What are you laughing at? Uh, I'm laughing because it came to us last year. Did, did, did we try it out? I know because of COVID-19. COVID well, the, full, the full project went uh, it was last year. Yeah, but... Um, until it got up and operational and, and police did some other research, they didn't endorse the on onboard beverage service. And so it's simply here this year for the beverage service only. It, 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 the bike is operating no matter what. They're okay. looking to be licensed now as a, as a tourism product. What about other jurisdictions? Is, is Halifax? It's, hap it's happening all over the world. Okay. Yeah. So our indicator would be Staff for, recommendation. To go to police, and police have given their blessing, providing the Liquor Commission on board, and Liquor Commission has given their blessing, providing police is on board. But in order for us to ratify the licensing, a letter of support has to come from the municipality, which would come through the CAO's office. Okay. <laughs> yes, that, absolutely. Thank you. Councillor McLeod. So, uh, so when you say the police are on board, so uh, they've been in contact with Med and other groups that maybe find that not so great an idea. Um, you know, the idea of the whole drinking and driving is like part of the piece. Like, where are they going to be stopping? Is it uh, going to be in Victoria Park? Like, that type of thing. Like, you know, it, it has a really good side of it. Yeah, very, very, very well thought out. It, like I said, they happen around the world. So, Remember, before the licensing, they're stopping at pubs all over the city anyway. Right. So they stop for 10 minutes, they go in, they have yeah. a drink, and they move away. The operator of the bike is not the... the no, no. Participants are simply pedaling, right? Yeah. Someone else controls the braking and the, uh, the steering um, itself. The yeah. company uh, carries its own licensing insurance, and um, police have, have been involved with the file from the uh, get-go with respect to the request, and yeah. they're ready to endorse. I had a lengthy conversation with uh, Mr. Kennedy just a couple of days ago. Okay. Oh, thank you. Do you have a question, Your Mayor? No, I'm just, I'm glad that the CAO would be sent to the Instead of the Mayor. <laughs> Councillor Cody Good? Any questions? Councillor Twill? Okay. So, so does this have to go to Council or do we just no, get to no, endorse? Please. Pardon? Move to please. I move to please. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So. Why does it move to police? No, it doesn't go to police. Yeah, the police put us out here. They've already had they already they've already signed off. They've yeah. endorsed Ron, they've it. They've already signed off. Yeah. So and from us to the CA, we give direction to the CAO service. then? It doesn't have to go to council. You just go no. we decide if we want yeah, to the, the liquor commission has specifically asked for a letter from the CAO's office. Okay, and staff recommends And that's CAO. CAO. <laughs> And the staff recommends this is a good endorsement. Yeah. Correct? And does the committee also concur? And that's what we're asking. Yeah. The other, the other thing I will mention is um, Mr. Kennedy also indicated that uh, like anything that they have approved, they will do on, on regular monitoring and, and work with the organizer um, 
throughout the year. And it's similar to like if you go on the water, a bit different, but when you go on the waterfront on Peaks Wharf boats, uh -huh. you have beverage on board, when you go on tours around it's the only thing I don't like about it when you, is the single-use plastic container. That 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 means it, which is just harmful to the environment. It's the worst piece of. Uh, I thought this was a green initiative. I know that's <laughs> but, but they have to use plastic and they can't reuse them, so they it's the single-use plastic cup. That's the only thing I don't. Yeah, like. they can't they can't have anything breakable on board. No. They can use paper. Yeah. Well, no, you can't because. It, but that's the only. We we will we will we'll speak with the organizers and express the concern and ask them to consider a product that is green and friendly. There is lots out there. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope there is. There, there just there is more that's that's the biggest problem in yeah. all our oceans. Yeah. Well, and I think that kind of supports what we're trying to promote with yeah. our sustainable goals. So. so ah. What if you find something that's a, a greener material? Yeah. We often hear we're throwing something under the bus. We just throwing Peter under the bus. <laughs> the bike. <laughs> So is everybody good with that? Yeah. And maybe have that conversation way to see if they could su be more supportive of the environmental initiative okay. through the city. We will. Thank and, you. And it's, it's needed because this is still COVID-19. Businesses will be looking for opportunities. Yeah. something. The request for council on the first ride is that on the same conversation? Yeah, I'll go. Yep, yeah, and so could I have a motion to endorse the letter coming from our CAO's office to, to endorse, the, to endorse yeah. the project? Yeah, are you putting that forward? Mm -hmm. Seconder? Yeah. No, you can't do both. I need a second. I know, I'm looking for the person to second. You did. All those in favor? <laughs> and all those against? <laughs> Two non votes mean yes, don't they? According to Robert's rules, carry on. <laughs> For nothing. Just as, as another FYI, this same operator is a, will be soon launching a solar powered tour boat in the Charlottetown Waterfront as well. Oh. <laughs> We're only asking for one endorsement at a time. <laughs> Wonderful. And the final item on our agenda tonight is the QMAJHL President's Cup Charlottetown branding. And that's you, Wayne. Madam Chair, again, it's just information sharing, no action requires. Um, the Charlottetown Islands are currently participating in the uh, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League President's Cup playoff bubble in Quebec City at Centre Videotron. Big win last night. Yeah. Um, playing tonight? Playing tonight again. Yeah. And then game three would be on uh, Friday night. Um, there's a number of television networks involved with the broadcast and um, with the city being a part of the um, Islanders uh, funding partners, um, we had the opportunity to um, get uh, rink boards visible to the television broadcast to promote the destination. So uh, we worked uh, with Discover Charlottetown as well. So we have one uh, city board to see with our Charlotte Great Things Happen Here logo and then Discover Charlottetown's uh, rink board is also on the back side um, promoting Charlottetown as a tourism uh, destination and they were visible during last night's broadcast and um, good uh, good use of, uh, of uh, investment to reach mass audience especially uh, in the Atlantic region the East Link broadcast I believe is uh, reached something somewhere in the range of 70 to 80,000 people. And then of course, uh, in Quebec, as you know, um, that league is very uh, popular um, within the province of Quebec. So there's, there's good viewership. That's excellent. Good, good game. Go sure. Isles. It was a great game last did night. You watch it? I did. Yes. I did. And I'll be watching tonight, 8.30. Yeah. Maybe Peace I'll get to Quebec. Uh, no, but you know what uh, Robbie was suggesting, we should light our tower with the, the colors of the team. Robbie Dump, I think. I think oh. Well, we're tied up with the... Uh, we have tours a week this weekend, and then I believe there is something else scheduled to start. There's a whole today. schedule, right? That's yeah. the commitments for already yeah. getting something. I mean, that's great. That's semi-finals. Yep. Yeah, well. It's excellent. And the yeah. other little thing I would mention is the sidebar, which um, happened after uh, we secured the ring boards. 
Um, Eastlink also made available a, a commercial spot, so the tours and commercials that Discover Charlottetown has uh, are on the broadcast as well, so you'll see those airing too. Excellent. Any more, any follow up, any last questions? Councillor Tweel? Well, was the city of Charlottetown not the opportunity to host this tournament? No. The city of Charlottetown explored the opportunity with the Charlottetown Islanders. Uh, we were, Councillor Tweel, um, in the position to host the Atlantic Championship, but because of the bubble being closed, both CPHO offices were not in support of that happening. So the quarterfinals had to happen at a neutral site. So the Atlantic Championship was decided um, in um, Schwinnigan. Schwinnigan, Schwinnigan. Uh, Quebec. And then the President's Cup was always to be held in Quebec City. And it, I believe it ties back to funding of the provincial Quebec government to the league and, and Quebec teams specifically. So to answer your question, we explored the opportunity. We, we did not have um, an official uh, opportunity to submit a bid to host. Was the chief medical officer involved in that equation? Was who? Chief medical officer. Yep. The chief, the chief medical officers in both uh, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island uh, agreed that it was not in the best interest of the Atlantic Championship to happen here. So the the uh, PJMHL moved the event to a neutral site out of the region. Just follow. Yeah. So mm -hmm. chief of medical officer, the province of Prince Edward Island said no. Correct. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Any other question? Me, because she said no, we could not. Uh, we could not make a submission to the league. Well, I would, I would say that CPHO, she was a part of the discussions with New Brunswick. They talked about uh, that. The Islanders were in communication as well as the Bathurst T Tan, and it, they did not get approval from the provincial jurisdictions. And so, did you say the games will be held in the video from Quebec City? They are. They, they are now. Oh, they start the rest of them, yeah. which is a beautiful facility. Yeah. So this first series is a best of five semifinals, <coughs> Charlottetown and Victoriaville, <coughs> and then if the winner of this series will move on um, to play in the uh, championship for the President's Cup. Yeah. And it's Valdor and uh, Valdor and the team no, that beat us no, before okay. uh, from Montreal. Armada. Armada. Is it Armada? No, who's it? I don't know. My mind's gone blank. And how many of you? <coughs> Bands are they allowed in the video drop? None. None. Shikunami and no. Valdor. Yeah, Shikunami. Right. Shikunami. No fans. No fans. No. It's Florida game last night. And the referees wear a mask. Well, next next week at uh, uh, most American destinations of NHL, it's full house. Oh my For the week after, I should say. Motion to adjourn. Green one. Wow. Seconder. Yep. All those in favor? Good job. In Thank America. you.